This right here is the Electric XP 3.0, or maybe I should call it the Electric XP 3.5. It has some upgrades from the 3.0 that I tested out last year, as this bike has better parts and programming. Were the new features enough to help the XP hold on to its claim as one of the best value buys in all of e-bikes? Watch the full review to find out. Okay, before we get things started, make sure you're already subscribed to the EBR channel and don't forget the notification bell. We have really awesome videos in the works and some e-bike giveaways lined up as well, and our YouTube subscribers will be the first to hear about it. So make sure you don't miss out on your chance to win a free e-bike. Now, back to the review. When the XP 3.0 originally debuted last year, it was somewhat of a jaw dropper. The XP 2.0 that came before it was already widely considered one of the best values you could find in the whole world of e-bikes. Was it perfect? No. But at its price, you were hard pressed to find an e-bike that gave you more features, and it was just downright fun. So then along comes the 3.0, and it improved upon the whole experience in virtually every way. I'm talking better motor, battery, braking, pedaling, and improved versatility. Keep in mind, these weren't small improvements either. Many of them were significant upgrades. And all of that happened while maintaining that budget-friendly $1,000 price tag. So while this bike right here is still called the 3.0, I'm affectionately referring to it as the XP 3.5 in my mind, as Electric once again made improvements to it just a little while ago, further upgrading the brakes and improving motor engagement thanks to what they call their PWR system, which I will be diving into more a little bit later on. It's just further proof that Electric is going to stretch the limits of what is possible to offer on a $1,000 e-bike. Let's break down all the highlights that you get on this XP right here. Let's start with the motor. It's a 500 watt rear hub motor with a 1,000 watt peak and 55 Newton meters of torque. It ships at class two 20 mile per hour speeds, but you can up it to class three 28 mile per hour pedal speeds as well. The battery is a 500 watt hour battery integrated into the frame. It is on the smaller side, but it actually still keeps a one to one ratio with the motor's nominal wattage, which is good overall for efficiency in terms of range. Um, you get a Shimano Tourney seven speed drivetrain that features an 11 to 28 tooth cassette here in the rear, paired with this large chain ring that largely eliminates any ghost pedaling in class two speeds. Uh, the electric branded tires, they were pretty good. It's 20 by three inch tires. They are wide enough for good stability and they have a tread pattern that makes them friendly for riding around in lighter dirt roads. Now it pairs nicely with the front suspension fork. It has 50 millimeters of travel up front, which helps soften the ride up a bit. And of course this saddle right here is in between cushy and sporty, which I'm a pretty big fan of. Now some included accessories are the headlight and tail light. You get some metal fenders that give it a more rugged appearance. And then this rack right here is actually a pretty big deal. It's integrated into the frame and rated for up to 150 pounds of carrying capacity, which means you can carry some heavier items or take advantage of the optional accessories to load up a child or even an adult here on the back. And who doesn't love traveling with the buddy system? Finally, let's move through the cockpit now. In the center is a large black and white display. It shows you all the usual uh, things such as speed and battery life. You have the over the bar shifter here on the right hand side and of course the brake levers. As I mentioned before, the brakes mark one of the newest upgrades to this version of the XP. It is a hydraulic disc brake setup for the first time paired with 180 millimeter rotors. And yes, it did improve stopping on this bike as I'll show you in a few moments. Now that covers the main spec areas. Any other nitty gritty details will be covered in the written review and I'll leave a link in the video description down below for that. But next up, let's take a look at how you go about folding down the XP 3.0. So folding the XP isn't much different than any other folding e-bike. Get the stem, frame, and pedals all started, and it's pretty straightforward from there. Let's go ahead and take a look. And there you have it, a smaller e-bike. 
So folded up, the dimensions are 37 inches long by 18 wide and 28 high. That's gonna fit in your average closet or save you some space in the garage. So we weighed this bike at just around 62 pounds with the battery in it and then 56 pounds with the battery taken out. So it is pretty heavy to pick up when getting it in a trunk, just be aware of that. And I think one of the few remaining things for electric to improve is, is finding a way to keep the bike folded when it's closed. But in the meantime, a few bungees is advisable and it will get you by. One of the reasons I love our standardized tests here at EBR is because it becomes really easy to see the improvements that brands make to their products over time. In the beginning, the XP model's Achilles heel was in the braking department. But now we're able to see just how far it's come with its latest hydraulic disc brakes and 180 millimeter rotors. So on this bike, like the XP's before it, we rode up to 20 miles per hour before stopping and measuring the distance it took to stop. After running that test a few times, we saw an average stopping distance of 21 feet and eight inches. Now that is 14 inches better than what we saw on the mechanical set of the XP 3.0 and way better than what we got on the 2.0, which had mechanical brakes on 160 millimeter rotors. On the 2.0, we were stopping around 27 feet on that model, meaning that this 3.0 right here has improved by nearly five feet in the braking test. So the one caveat here is that the brakes are unbranded, meaning I cannot speak to their longevity, but I have no issues with how they perform for us over the nearly 150 miles we put on this bike already. They feel like a worthwhile upgrade that's made the value king of e-bikes feel like an even better deal. So this speed test went a little bit differently for us on the 3.0 thanks to the new programming of their PWR system. Let's take you through our test and see how it went. All right, so I'm out here speed testing the electric XP 3.0, um, starting things off with no motor help. Uh, the bike's rolling pretty well right here. Uh, between 12 and a half up to 13 miles per hour. I'll show you what it's like when you engage that motor. So as I click into PAS1, the motor has a very slight hum and it's picking up speed a little bit. It's, it's barely something you can feel, but I mean, as you can see, it's increasing my speeds. It'll go 14 miles per hour or so. It's probably easy enough to change gears one more time. And yeah, I'm able to pick it up to about 15 miles per hour. Try PAS2. Again, kind of the same thing. It's coming a little bit louder now, picking up speeds ever so slightly. Probably enough to put it in seventh gear, maintaining that same effort level. Yeah, it's fairly subtle overall, I'd say, but gives you a little bit of a boost. 17. So PAS3 is definitely where it's going to take off the most. And it's going to help me get up to 20 miles per hour, no problem. So where I'm already at 20 and we're testing this in class two speeds, four and five won't tell a different story. So I'm going to instead do a zero to 20 time trial for PS3, four and five to kind of showcase the different acceleration, but the PWR system where it just adds watts on top of what you do pedaling, kind of makes the results look flat, but there is some good acceleration difference between them. I'll kind of showcase that to you now. All right, this is zero to 20 speed test in PS3. And ready, set, go. Letter to the decent job, giving you some good acceleration to get going. And then move up into the seventh gear, start out in fifth gear. And there's 20, according to the bike's display. Okay, zero to 20 pedal assist test at PAS4. And here we go. So that's got some quicker acceleration than PAS3 did. Already able to get up pretty quickly at 18, 19 miles per hour. Go through the gears and there's 20. Okay, last one, pedal assist five, zero to 20 test. Here we go. Moving quickly through the speeds, able to move up a gear, two, and there is 20. All right, so the throttle test uh, for the XP 3.0, 
for me as a 230 pound rider, I've noticed it's kind of topping me off between 18 and 19 miles per hour. So I'm gonna call it when I feel it's reached its peak. So with that in mind, ready, set, go. There's 18 miles per hour. So the results ended up being a bit clustered at the top, but I'm actually happy with the ride. I recorded results around 13 miles per hour with no motor help. I then boosted up to around 15 miles per hour in PAS1 and 17.2 miles per hour in PAS2. Then I was able to hit 20 miles per hour in PAS3, 4, and 5. So while I typically prefer to see linear results here, the graph can't tell the full story. The PWR system focuses on adding steady wattage at each level of pedal assist instead of capping you at a certain speed at each level of pedal assist, meaning you can get constant help in measured doses. There is still an acceleration difference that you can feel at three, four, and five, but it's nice to know that you have a bit more control over how much motor help you get to hold those speeds if you're traveling at 20 miles per hour. I don't think it's a change most people are going to notice, but I think it is a step in the right direction in terms of programming on a hub motor with a cadence sensor. Now, as a final note here on the speed test, the range of the gearing is great for pedaling around in class two speeds, but just know that you'll experience some ghost pedaling in class three speeds where the motor will be doing more work than the rider when you're moving fast. Just as I mentioned on the brake section, I'm pretty happy with how we standardize our test here at EBR because the data really helps show the changes that are made from bike to bike. So here in the range department, we can see some of the effects of the PWR programming. In our minimum PAS test, we went 44.25 miles, and then our max assist range test, we were able to go 28.61 miles. Now these are great results on their own from a 10.4 amp hour battery, but it's also improved over the previous 3.0 we tested last year that didn't have the PWR programming. That bike was tested at PAS2 on our minimum range test since PAS1 didn't provide our riders with practical assistance, and we only went 33 miles on that older bike. Interestingly, we had roughly the same average speeds, um, both on the 33 uh, range result and 44 this time around. So it's nice to see that the wattage on PAS1 here is more usable and it actually offers better mileage. Now, one thing people will point to as an area of concern on the XP is its smaller 10.4 amp hour battery. In my experience, 20 plus miles of riding in a single day will more than take care of the majority of the population, so I don't really see it as a problem. Now, if you do have a longer commute though, and you wanna go a few more days between charges, you can order your XP with an upgraded 14 amp hour battery for a couple hundred bucks more, which should boost your range totals by about 35%. Next up, we have one of our fan favorite tests, our hill test. So for each bike we review, we take it up the local steep of Hellhole to see what the bike can do under the toughest of circumstances. Now this hill covers a third of a mile of distance at a 12% average grade, and I'll pass you over to Justin as he takes you up the hill. All right, so on the electric XP 3.0 throttle test, now this has their kind of new upgraded 500 watt rear hub motor, but it peaks at a thousand watts. So I was really curious to see how it does on this hill test. Um, so out of the gate, up the steep section, we're at about 11, 10 miles per hour, 9. It doesn't say what the wattage exactly is, um, so we'll have to rely on the time there. So down to 7, 8 miles per hour. So go through this next section. Looks like, yeah, kind of the low is going to be right about that 7.2, 7.3-ish. Um, as we hit this next and kind of last steep section of this hill, the whole hill steep, but the more steep section, let you listen to the motor to see, give you an idea of what it sounds like and what it feels like as you go up the steep hill and into a flat. Yeah, so you can hear the motor working. Um, it's not on the high pitch, it's kind of more medium pitched, um, is what it kind of sounds like. But decent speed through that section, de decent speed on throttle through the whole hill. Um, so, you know, if you've been out on a long ride, you're tired and hit a hill, yeah, if it makes it up hell hole, it's going to make it up most, most any hill out there. So we'll see what the pedal test does. Alright, so now we're on the pedal test with the Electric XP 3.0. 
Um, I'm gonna just kind of soft dish pedal up through here, kind of at a pace that I could just talk to someone for 20 miles and see how it does. So far, pretty good. I haven't had to shift down at all, right about 13 miles an hour, 12. And 11. Shifted fairly smoothly through that hill. And down to just about 10 miles per hour is all. And again, I'm just kind of soft dish pedaling here. In here, I'm not breathing very hard. Next section, I'm going to let you listen to the motor again. So you can see how it sounds when you're pedaling up a hill. Yeah, still kind of on that mid-level for wine noise here at working. Um, we also noticed it shifted pretty smoothly through that hill. They shifted down and as they shift up. So overall, very comfortable climbing this hill. Very smooth and pretty easy. So we'll see what the results say. So as you can see, the 500 watt motor and its 55 newton meters of torque makes for a very capable hill climber. Justin's throttle result was a minute and 35 seconds with an average speed of 11.4 miles per hour, while his max PAS test came back with a time of a minute and 21 seconds with 13.4 mile per hour speeds. So the PWR programming didn't change up much in terms of the hill test results as both were nearly identical to what we recorded on the previous 3.0 a year ago. Electric put enough juice into the motor here to get you up just about any hill. That you can have such a capable hill climber in a relatively small package is awesome. It further shows why this e-bike is as popular as it is. Making easy work of any hill just gives you more confidence to go explore wherever you like. So props to Electric for what it can do on the hill test. One other thing that makes the XP 3.0 as popular as it is, is how versatile it is and how it adapts to every rider. There are a lot of comfort features here, so let's go ahead and go out on one last ride to talk about the overall ride quality. So let's talk about the feeling when you're in the saddle of the XP 3.0. So for a folding e-bike, it's got a fairly upright riding posture with a very slight forward lean. Um, and it's got a kind of a fairly long reach at 18 and a half or to 20 inches, which uh, also kind of a common characteristic of folding e-bikes like this. Uh, I've got pretty straight elbows here, but overall it's like fairly comfortable riding posture. Um, it has a lot of adaptability. Uh, electric claims that I can fit riders from four foot 10 up to six foot five, I believe. And that's thanks to the fact that you can uh, raise this telescoping handlebar here uh, about three inches. The seat post has, I believe, 10 inches of adjusting for up and down. So you can kind of like dial it in, find a, a good way to set it for your desired pedal stroke. Now, in terms of what it does for comfort, it has the front suspension fork here with 50 millimeters of travel, kind of combined with the wider uh, 20 by three inch electric tire. Uh, it's a decent amount of like comfort there. It just helps to make a, you know any bumps in the road or if you're off-roading, kind of takes some of the sting out of those bumps, makes them a little less jarring, so it adds to a good comfort. And of course, these tires, you can, I think the max PSI is 25. You can lower that down to 20 or something, just make it softer and nicer to ride on. So speaking of the tires, they are at three inches wide, what we would consider a fat tire, but uh, just barely meeting that classification. It actually rolls decently well on paved roads like this one. Um, not something that feels like it fights you that it's so wide or, and so heavy. Um, and it's got enough of a tread pattern on there that it's pretty capable in uh, some of the dirt areas or gravel uh, that you see, kind of like what's on the side of the road by me. And then uh, if you're going to talk about the ride quality, of course I have to mention just how the motor engages. So the PWR system that they have on here is pretty nice kind of adding some wattage on top of the natural wattage you produce as a rider. And then I actually kind of like it. The uh, uh, throttle is tied into what pedal assist you're in. So here your PAS1, if I hold down the throttle, it kind of holds and maintains a fairly steady and fairly easy pace. Whereas when I bump this up to pedal assist three, for example, and I hit the throttle, it'll take off a little bit, takes off a little bit faster. And if I put it in five, it's got even more acceleration. So it is a bike that can adapt to a lot of different people and provide pretty good speeds uh, for, for people through its one through five settings. So with all the features in place and for the bike being as adjustable as it is, 
it is why this bike is pr as practical for someone headed to college as it is for a recent retiree wanting an e-bike that tucks away in their camper. It's pretty versatile as to who can ride it, spanning people across all sorts of different demographics. Speaking of that versatility, if the included comfort features don't sound like enough for you, there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can upgrade it and make the ride experience better for you. That includes thicker saddles on, suspension seat posts, as well as a few other ride enhancements. And in terms of just how usable the XP 3.0 can be, there are a ton of optional accessories that you can add to this bike that help take advantage of that 150 pound weight capacity on the rear rack. There are racks, bags, passenger packages, child attachments, pet trailers, food courier items, and so much more. We were sent a bunch of these to test out, but they really warrant their own video. So we'll leave a link in this video here where you can go check that out as soon as it's live. But to wrap up the section, I'll just say that a bike that cost this little could have easily skimped out on some of the ride quality features, but electric didn't. And since it doesn't cost a lot, it's really not hard to talk yourself into an upgrade or two if you feel you want something just a little bit extra. And electric surely doesn't lack for options as to what you can upgrade on this bike. The Electric XP 3.0 is going to remain a recommendation I keep in my back pocket anytime someone asks what e-bikes they should be looking into. Spec for spec for your dollar, I can't think of another bike that matches it, and that spec leads to pretty awesome performance. The motor is great, the battery is pretty efficient, and the new brakes are the safest yet. The reinforced rear rack and the massive amount of optional accessories means there's a lot of different use cases for what you can do with an electric XP, which is already a versatility king. While I wouldn't mind a built-in solution for keeping the bike folded or the option to ride the bike without the key being in it, I'm honestly being pushed to nitpicky things to find suggestions for improvements. This bike seems to retest the limits of what's possible to do at a $1,000 price point, making it, in my eyes, the value leader to beat in the e-bike world. I'm gonna end this review how I did the last time I reviewed the 3.0 in the most plain and simple terms possible. The XP 3.0 remains a bike we feel confident recommending to just about anybody. It's that fun, that versatile, and that affordable. It is in every way an improvement on what came before it. Electric wanted to make an e-bike with mass appeal, and here it is with the XP 3.0. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found this review helpful. For whatever questions you have, leave us a comment down below. Current pricing can be found in the link in the video description, which if you do buy an XP through that link, it will help out EBR at no additional cost to you. And last but not least, if you aren't a subscriber yet, we'd love to have you join us. Make sure to subscribe with that notification bell so you're alerted to all of our latest content or e-bike giveaways. Again, I'm Griffin with Electric Bike Report, and I'll see you on the next review.